If you want to be scammed, then I guess be my guest. What a comfy couch. Yeah, this is really comfy. Let's talk about Facebook Marketplace in 2022. Let's do it. Before we jump in and talk about Facebook Marketplace, we just want to thank Allform for this couch and for sponsoring this video. Allform is a sister brand of Birch and Helix, and so they sent us over a couch so that we could have something down here in my parents' basement to sit on when we're over here editing and uploading footage and things like that. And you guys, this couch from Allform was so easy to put together. As you guys know, we don't have the best internet over on the farm, so we have to come over to her parents' house and hang out in her basement for a few hours a week to upload footage and to review footage from our editor and everything like that. So having this sofa in the house and down in the basement in our little creative space, it's gonna play a huge part in allowing us to be a lot more comfortable but enjoy our time here. Right, and like we said, it was so easy to set up. It took us right around 30 minutes to set up from start to finish, from unboxing to putting it all together and the easy, easy directions to follow. It, it was just a seamless process. You can go onto Allform's website and customize the couch that you are interested in. So from color to leg color to how many seats you want and if you want it to be a sectional or have a chase lounge, they also have just single chairs as well. So tons of options to choose from. Check out Allform. Visit the link below or go to allform.com slash flipping for 20% percent off the sofa of your choice. Now that we've got that taken care of and we're comfortable, let's get to Facebook Marketplace in 2022. We get asked tons of questions about Facebook Marketplace, so we wanted to bring to light some of those answers and then just sort of go over and explain how I personally use Facebook Marketplace to sell my items. Neiman doesn't usually get on there um, to list things. That's pretty much my job, I go through my personal account. And that's something that's asked a lot. Do you go through your business account or do you go through your personal account? And if I'm understanding Facebook correctly, you can't make the page post a thing for sale in Marketplace or in those buy, sell, trade groups. So I go through my personal account. So yes, it's under Lauren. And then Facebook recently, probably within the last year, created a thing where you can have a commerce profile versus just posting as your person. It's, it's still your profile, but it's also got a lot of information about the commerce side of it. So it's got all of your listings there. It's even got th some, it's even got the things that you sold on there so that people start to realize, you know, oh, this person is posting a lot. And then they've got this option where you can follow people on marketplace. So if someone comes and they pick up a piece from you and they they're like, wow, do you do this all the time? Say, yes, I do. And I put my pieces on Marketplace. You know, you can follow me on Facebook Marketplace and you can be notified when I post things. It's kind of weird um, following someone on Facebook Marketplace because it's it's not that you're doing it to gain any, to gain like a huge following, but at least those people are able to tell immediately when you're posting things. Well, and they're, able to tell immediately but a lot of the times too when people come and pick a piece up and the power of having a commerce profile is that they can follow you so when they come and pick that piece up you know they walk into our shop they pick up their piece but then they see all the other pieces that we have and they also will always tell Lauren like I'm looking for this 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 and this and this and then Lauren will go back and she'll tell them well make sure you go follow the commerce profile because we're posting stuff and then that way you get notified notifications, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So it's a really big, powerful part of Facebook marketplace and selling your products and your furniture on there. Yeah. And I, 
I also wanted to say uh, they have reviews too. Uh, by having a commerce profile, you can have like a rating. And so it just helps again, people solidify that they wanna buy from you, that they can trust buying from you. Yeah. When you begin to build that commerce profile, those ratings go up, you've got good stars. They can see, you know, is she respectful? Does she communicate well? Is her, are her prices fair, On et cetera. Time, things like that, yeah. For sure. And actually one time we had a person who came across a chair listing and then she, instead of messaging me about the other chair that she was interested in, when she arrived, she said, oh, I also saw that you had this listed. Is it still available? So again, with that, that uh, availability of all of the pieces that you have being listed under your commerce profile is just a huge help and Facebook did a really good job doing that. Yeah, so another big Facebook update to their marketplace system has been the addition of video listing or a video segment to your photos as well. So let's talk about that. That's right, the video segment on Facebook marketplace, if you guys haven't utilized it yet, well, we've only actually done it one time, but it is super cool because we were able to splice up about a 30 second video of how everything looks. And I pulled out the drawers and pushed them in as Neiman was recording. So that's just another level of transparency, another level of solidifying that that person wants to actually come before you know coming and seeing that all oh, the drawers don't quite work just right or oh there's a blemish there that i didn't know about yeah it's another great way to showcase your pieces and to give them even more details that photos can't really relay to the buyer i think it is a great way to like she said get people from not wasting their time and to solidify in their mind before they even go out and look at the piece in person that they want the piece yeah and we were even able to add a little bit of music we we i spliced it up meaning I took several different videos, put them together, and then in another app, I put some music over it. So it was really cool and kind of calming, but I think if you guys start doing that- Especially you know, right now, because it's really early as far as Facebook yeah. rolling this out. Yeah, I think that if that if you start doing that, you know, people are gonna start to recognize, hey, like, you know, they're taking that extra time to show me how their pieces look, and I think that that's really powerful. Yeah, it's gonna separate yourself and give you a competitive advantage against everybody else that is out there listing furniture. Yeah, but it also comes down to photos and how well your photos and now video look on Facebook Marketplace. So let's talk about that now. Let's do it. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple when it comes to photos. We need to focus on lighting and we need to focus on the variety of photos that we take. We have 10 spots on a Facebook Marketplace listing. Let's use nine of those spots to show a pretty detailed visual of the entire piece. And then for lighting, we don't want anything that's directly in the sun. If you can, like we have these windows right here, do you see how the window lighting is diffusing the light onto this couch and just making it a bit more of a softer lighting? That's what we're looking for is soft lighting. You don't want it to be directly into the sun, but you don't want it to be tucked away in the furthest, darkest part of your home. Find somewhere where there's soft lighting, a nice shaded area to where it makes skin look nice and smooth and, and just perfect. Yeah, even though there's no skin on the things that we're selling, but you get the point. You get the point. <laughs> and along with the great lighting, also make sure that you've got a great background. It doesn't have to be a staging wall. If you have the space and the means to do so, that's a great addition as well. But even just putting a piece on a bare wall yep. in your house that has great lighting, that is going to be so much better than just taking a photo of the piece in the middle of a room or the middle of your workshop. Also, the last thing that I wanna mention about photos is that your staging doesn't have to be too complicated either. That just needs to be some minimal decorations and it's not gonna be in every photo either. When Neiman takes our photos, I make sure to stage it for just one or two so that he can get that first photo just so that people can imagine it in their home but again you don't want to overdo it because you want to make sure that the buyer or the person who is looking to buy knows what's actually for sale so. and that's the furniture 
<laughs> yeah. So don't go putting 10 pieces of furniture in one piece in one photo, make sure that the center of attention is the piece that you are actually selling. Now for one of the downfalls in what we're seeing in Facebook Marketplace right now. The scams. Let's talk about the scams. So one of the main reasons why I originally loved using Facebook Marketplace, and by the way, when I'm talking about Facebook Marketplace, I'm not just referencing Facebook Marketplace, the app button, or the button in the app. I'm also referencing all of the buy, sell, trade groups that I am a part of in my area. And if you're not a part of all of those in your area, definitely join those because you are able to post your pieces across 20 different buy sell trade groups including marketplace so if you don't know what I'm talking about be sure to start re re researching in your area so here I say Omaha buy sell trade or any of the cities that are around me so that I can continue to reach more and more people but that's not the point of this segment of the video. The point is that the reason that I started using Facebook marketplace is because they were really good at just avoiding any scamming that is going on to their website and their platform. Whereas like with Craigslist, if you were to be posting stuff on there, the amount of scams and people phishing for your numbers, mm -hmm. your important information to try to steal identity, it's much more abundant over there, or at least it was. Yeah, so what we are referencing, I will, we will pop up a comment here that, or a message here that I've gotten several times and what will happen usually within the first few minutes or few hours of you listing a piece someone will message you and they'll say uh, is this still available and if you say yes then they'll say when can I pick it up give me your phone number I will message you or text me or something along those lines to for you to give your phone number and that is a huge red flag why is it a huge red flag out of our experience, again, this is just our experience and our advice. Um, with how long Lauren has been doing it, we have noticed that through our conversations that start with a regular inquiry and that end with the sell, we usually don't get to the process of exchanging a phone number or that type of information until essentially like 80%, 90% of the way of like the process. Right, like and that's if we even do that. There's very rare occasions when I will give out my phone number, but when that's happening immediately, at them asking it immediately, I know immediately that that's a scam. And what they are trying to do from my knowledge is that they are trying to get your phone number. They're gonna type it into a Google uh, verification system or something along those lines and then it's gonna send you a code and it has never gotten this far for me but if you give them that code that is sent to your phone from whatever they're doing on their end that is when they're going to start being able to kind of get into your business and get into your life having access to your different accounts so on top of they're gonna try to send you links mm -hmm. and get you to click on the links right. don't click on the links well first of all just don't send send anyone your phone number. There is no reason that you need to send a phone number. Everything that needs to be done when selling a piece can be done through the Facebook Marketplace messaging platform. So do not give your phone number out. PSA, do not do it. We got here at, to this point mm -hmm. doing what we do without handing out the phone number. It's just our advice, but there is no reason to. We've had people argue the fact that there is nothing wrong with giving your phone number out. It's just not necessary. If That's you, what's wrong If you it. want to be scammed, and I guess be my guest, but we're here to tell you that it's not necessary to give out phone numbers and that also it's in your best interest safety-wise to also not do that. 
All right, now that my teacher voice is going away and I'm a little bit more calmed down, let's talk about how to list a piece on Facebook Marketplace along with how to find pieces on Facebook Marketplace. All right, this last part is probably one of the most important parts because you actually need to be able to sell the furniture in order to you know, make this furniture flipping thing actually be successful. And so if you're listing on Facebook Marketplace, which although there are scams it's still the best platform that I have ever come across to do this then there's a few things that you need to have in your description so along with the photos and the videos which are most important you need to have description so you're gonna want a title of the piece and that can be very descriptive as well I think you have up to a hundred characters so utilize as many as those of those as you can just describe what it is the style the color how many drawers how many doors or whatever information you feel is important and those as many words as you can because you are going to be utilizing those keywords when people are typing in to search that type of furniture the next thing that I always like to do is to have just a tiny description of what I think the piece could be used for, what it might look good as, along with what type of house it may look good in or what type of room or what it can be used for. Meaning if I'm listing a chair, say, then I could say, you know, this might look good in a reading nook or a nursery or as a living room chair. I'm giving so many options because, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> browse Facebook Marketplace even if they really don't need furniture. And so if you are giving them ideas of what your pieces could be used for. Painting the vision for them. Yeah, then you know it gives them a reason. Oh, hey, I never thought of that, but yeah, I do need an extra chair in this little reading nook or something along those lines. Yep. The next part that I be sure to always, always include is the dimensions because not only do they need to see if it's going to fit in their space in their home, they also need to see if they are gonna need to pick up a truck in order to get this piece home or if it's gonna fit in their little tiny SUV or their little tiny Toyota Corolla or whatever it may be. And the question is coming, they're gonna ask it. Everybody asks this question. So just save yourself some time in having to answer the question every time by putting yeah. it in your description for sure i always include the length the width and the height um, and so that is just going to mitigate all of those questions being asked the next thing that i do is that i describe a location i do not give out my address on the actual post but i'll say it's near these cross streets which are you know streets that are that people would be familiar with in my area and along with that, I also encourage them to ask about delivery. You know, Neiman and I have a truck now, and so that's something that we're able to do, of course, for a little bit of an extra fee. So what I put in there is we can deliver in this area and this area for a small fee. I don't put that fee on there because if they're two streets over, you know, it's gonna be a lot less than if they're 30. And then the last thing that I put in there is to message me for details because since I'm posting in all of those buy sell trade groups I don't necessarily want all the comments um, being filled up with people asking me questions I'd rather that be a one-on-one -on -one thing and then I make sure to put in there how I accept forms of payment so cash and Venmo are the ones that I mostly put up on there um, Venmo is great for deposits mm -hmm. if people are wanting to hold a piece then i definitely need a deposit i'm not going to save a piece this is something that's important don't save pieces for people that are going to come in a week if you've already got other people or even if you don't have other people that are lined up to get that piece make sure that you've got the money in hand because that person that's coming in a week could ghost you and then now you're out that time and that money for the piece um, when you have other people that are interested as well. With those deposits, obviously, like she just said, you don't want to 
have turned down all of those people in that week that you're waiting. So that deposit is usually non-refundable as well. And that is again, to get them to know that this is serious yeah. and we have people that we are turning down. So mm -hmm. if it's a hundred bucks, if it's 250 bucks, whatever percentage of the final like piece price, like with Lauren, we'll usually do 50% of the actual it, piece. Yeah, or does again, it, vary? It, it varies. I do not do less than $50 um, because that's a pretty substantial amount of money for someone to just drop yeah. and um, but not that, ever come back for the piece. But then that way, now they have skin in the game and even if they do bail and you have to repost, you have at least made some money for the hassle of what just happened. Right, so. and be totally transparent yep. with them about that being non-refundable. I did have an issue with that one time and ever since then I have said, this is a non-refundable deposit and it, everything's been fine. And sometimes people don't want to do the deposit and I say, all right, I'm sorry, you know, I'm go ahead and check back on the day that you are planning on picking it up. Um, if, it's and if it's available, it's available. Yeah, they'll, they can come and get it, but I won't hold it without uh, some money down. So the last and the final point, I'm gonna let Neven take it away because although I used to do this all the time and I still do it, um, he's kind of, taken over the <laughs> um, job of searching Facebook Marketplace for furniture for us to flip. So a big question that we get all the time um, with our Instagram and how we are always updating you guys over there with us finding pieces is how do you guys find your furniture? And you know, we find our furniture through a multitude of ways, but one of those ways is Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I think people tend to overcomplicate it. It's not a complicated process it's whatsoever. It's not rocket science. No, it's not. All we do, all I do, all she does, all her mom does when she's looking for furniture for us is we go onto the Facebook Furniture Marketplace app interface. And from there, because especially now that we're looking at furniture all the time, you know, the Facebook algorithm, it'll like, uh, it'll suggest uh, recommendations for us or the latest posts, the most popular posts. And so just by checking it periodically, we're always coming across new furniture that Facebook is feeding us essentially. And then if you scroll um, from the Facebook Marketplace main page, if you scroll down, you'll begin to see that Facebook is categorizing some of the what is listed you can see antiques and collectibles, you'll see furniture, you'll see car sales, you'll see home sales and all of this. So again, I think as we have continued to stay searching and clicking on furniture listings and everything, the algorithm really picks up on that. Yeah. And so now essentially all we're seeing is uh, furniture and homes. <laughs> so yeah, we're it, looking for homes. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory for us. It's it's that easy. It's just going to the Facebook Market page, home homepage, and looking for furniture. Now, if you're looking for something more specific, you could always go into the search bar over to the left, I believe, and type in MCM furniture, yeah. antique furniture, and you can get more specific that way. Right, or even specific actual pieces. So dresser. Um, table and chairs, you know, you can specifically look for those types of things if you're in the market for something super specific. That's another great feature of Marketplace. Yeah. And so that I think is like the surface level answer to that, but like the detailed answer or maybe the real gem in this is look all the time. Yeah. Whether it be every 15 minutes, whether it be every 30 minutes, I, we are always checking Facebook Marketplace because most of the time with the furniture that we do find on this platform, it is just a matter of time. It's being the first person yeah. to inquire and to get on that waiting list or whatever it may be. Especially for the free pieces or the pieces that you know are gems, but maybe the seller just doesn't care or doesn't know. You need to get uh, rid of it yeah, really quick. Yeah. yeah, sometimes that is just a benefit of on our side of just knowing what is out there. And if you know that something is a gem or you think something is or you can turn it into a gem, then definitely hop on that 
right away. Yeah. I think that really concludes uh, the basis of Facebook Marketplace. I know it was quick and it was a lot of information, so definitely rewatch it if you need to. And there's, there's just so much information about Facebook Marketplace. And I think that the bottom line is that you've just got to continue to experiment um, with descriptions, with photos, with finding pieces, and, and just all of it. But yeah. the main thing that I just want to continue to harp on is do not get scammed because like I said, this part of furniture flipping is totally necessary yeah. in order to make it work, in order to, you know, make sales. And so the bottom line is that you don't want to get those scams. So just be careful when you're on marketplace. And other than that, have fun selling. And it's, it's kind of fun going back and forth with people. Um, one last point that just popped into my head, do not sell yourself short. You know, in the beginning, I had to make sure that I was not selling myself short. Even and I made a rule that five days would have to go by before I would ever even think about lowering the price. And I think I've gotten really good at that. And now I even wait months sometimes. So it, it is a waiting game with some pieces, especially those more out there pieces, but just stay patient like we always say. And that's the power of getting a part of all those groups and Facebook because it's a numbers game at the end of it. So stay patient. Yeah. I think that really concludes it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to all form again for sponsoring this video. And if you guys are interested, definitely click on that link down below. If you guys found some value, which we hope you did because we dropped some darn gems in this video, <laughs> make sure to get subscribed. Let us know, is there anything else on the marketplace that you're seeing that we should know and that our audience should know? Yeah definitely interact down there with us in the comments. We will be commenting as well as answering any questions that you guys may have about Facebook Marketplace or selling furniture in general. So thanks so much for watching and we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the flip, flip side. side.